Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly update for Monday, January 17th. Russia bashing is a bipartisan activity in Washington. Both parties think it makes them look tough and pro-America. But while Republicans and Democrat politicians continue to one-up each other on risk-free threats to Russia, they are increasingly risking a devastating nuclear war. It's all fun and games until the missiles start flying, and in this case, we are risking total destruction over who owns eastern Ukraine. How so much ever been risk for so little? The problem with all this tough talk is that politicians start to believe their own rhetoric and propaganda. As a result, they don't make sound decisions based on objective facts, but instead make rash decisions based on faulty information. When U.S. politicians talk about Russia massing troops on the Ukrainian border, for example, they leave out the fact that these troops are actually inside Russia. With U.S. troops in some 150 countries overseas, you'd think Washington might pause before criticizing the aggression of troops inside a country's own borders. They also leave out the reasons why Russia might be concerned over its neighbor, Rukain. CNN reported recently that the Biden administration approved another $200 million in military aid to Ukraine last month, making nearly a half a billion dollars in weapons over the past year. Imagine if China was sending half a billion dollars in weapons to Mexico to strengthen and embolden a hyper-aggressive anti-U.S. regime. Would the U.S. not be massing troops near the Mexican border? Also, there is that issue about the U.S.-backed overthrow of the democratically elected Ukrainian government in 2014, which is the starting point of all those recent problems. And this week, Yahoo News reported that the CIA is training Ukrainian paramilitaries on U.S. soil. Recent talks between U.S. and Russia failed before they even began, with the U.S. side refusing to even consider ending useless and provocative NATO expansion eastward. NATO is a Cold War relic that should have been disbanded along with the Warsaw Pact. It serves no purpose, and its constant saber-rattling puts it at risk. It conflicts with what we have nothing to do with the U.S. national security. How embarrassing it was to hear Blinken ridiculing Russia for coming to the aid of ally Kazakhstan as a color revolution with a likely U.S. backing, was brewing. I think one lesson in recent history is that once Russians are in your house, it's sometimes very difficult to get them to leave, Blinken told reporters. He said this with a straight face, even as the U.S. continues to illegally occupy a large part of Syria, continue to occupy parts of Iraq against the will of that country's parliament, and occupied a good part of Afghanistan for 20 years. Incidentally, as soon as the regime change attempt was put down in Kazakhstan, Russia and allied troops began leaving the country. But of course, the reflexively pro-war U.S. media doesn't report anything outside. What to do about Russia? Stop backing regime change along Russia's borders, including Belarus, Kazakhstan, and elsewhere. Stop meddling in foreign elections. Look at how we wasted four years on false claims that the Russians meddled in ours. End weapons shipments and all aid to Ukraine. End sanctions. Reimagine the U.S. defense budget as a budget to actually defend the U.S. It's really not that complicated, stop trying to rule the world.